Running around all the time in your mind, but you're not free. I see you want to be grounded, grounded like me. He is the vine, and we are the branches. Understand that this is all about authority. You can be free. You can overcome. You can overcome. Up in heaven, angels dance 'cause they're free. They'll be seen for eternity. Without God and His Son Jesus, everything is peaceful and lightless. Happy always doing His will. Happy always doing His will. Overcome. we've had so far and there's just so much more to go there's so much change people being born again left and right and just to say a special hello to everyone around the world that's joining in with that there's more and more every day facebook's continuing to grow and so thankful for all those facebook people that have been helping us with uh every all the teaching and everything going on let's give a hand to all the people that have Uh, that group includes Stacy Sims, Ronna Rickman, Christine Petrolito, Debbie Blair, Jenny Mendel, Elizabeth Pennington, Beth Smiley, Lisa Roth, Sherry Barclay, and Jessica Enns. And these guys work around the clock for the Saints and helping them to win these battles. You know what? We're not winning a lot of battles in this country and now in the world. We have got a lot of people who are obese and that number is growing and in fact 160 million people Americans are overweight or obese now this includes kind of a strange way to put it but three out of every four men and three out of every five women are now overweight they're gaining on the statistics of kind of the new norm and this is not just in adults in America. The World Health Organization says the number of obese children and adolescents worldwide has risen tenfold in the past four decades. To combat this, an estimated 108 million Americans go on a diet each year. So they're attempting to get back on it and get back on track. With most dieters making four to five attempts per year and spending a total of about $33 billion each year on weight loss products, and that would just be special foods for the most part. However, most are unsuccessful, and we know that. We all were there, weren't we? And studies show that at least 80% of the people will gradually regain. I mean, as far as I know, that um, I, I think the number's higher than that, but they're they're saying 80%, it used to be 98%. Now they're saying 80%, but they have lost, most of it that do lose are going to just wind up as large or even larger than they were before they went on a diet, which is really what Way Down was founded on, that dieting is only exacerbates the problem of overeating. So with this hopeless cycle, many people are just giving up. And according to NPR, the percentage of people dieting each year is actually declining due to acceptance of larger body sizes. So we're all getting accustomed to large. And although adolescents are becoming more obese, a study in the Washington Post found that these teens are 30% less likely to think they're obese. And this is a statistic that comes from this new phenomenon sociologists call comparison theory, which holds that we make the assessment based on the people around us. And the people around us are just all getting larger. So people are not even aware anymore that they're overweight and the children are even less likely to believe they even have a problem, problem, so they won't even attempt to lose. This issue of particular importance to many people at this time of year, because in spite of the outward signs of acceptance, many people still know down deep they're overweight and they're afraid 
that they're going to gain weight every year during the holiday times. And of course, America does do that and starts back over in January. Some reports say that people can gain anywhere from three to 10 pounds, but I think we all know that we may have beat those odds and beat, beat those numbers ourselves and it gained even more during the holidays back before Way Down. However, here at Way Down, we have found an alternative. And I'd like to introduce you tonight to just a few of the people that have beat the odds. So let's let this lineup begin. Come on up, guys. Good evening, everyone. My name is Adam Barnhart and from Nashville, Tennessee, originally from Missouri. And God has allowed me to lose 75 pounds through the Way Down Ministries. And just as a man growing up in the world, I had a lot of pride in my heart. And I'm very thankful to God for a clear message of obedience. And it wasn't until I learned that I simply cannot walk this out on my own and that I needed God. That was my defining moment. And I'm so grateful for whatever is taught through Way Down and Remnant Fellowship. And I praise God. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Vicki Veter, and I've lost over 162 pounds. The weight's been off for 10 years now. I am so grateful to God. and. I started this journey at the age of 50, and all I want to say to those out there is that it's never too late to hear the truth and to apply it to your life. Hi, my name is Rana Rickman, and I have lost 130 pounds, and I've had it off for about eight years. And um, probably the number one thing is just persevering and sticking with it and keep going and never give up. Just keep going. Hi, my name is Jill Snap. I've lost 180 pounds and had it off for 12 years now. And the day I found Way Down was the best day of my life. This has changed everything in my life in every way for the better, and it keeps doing that. Every class, every time is always just the best thing that's ever happened, and I'm so grateful. My name is Melissa Borman, and I've lost 100 pounds. I've had it off for over 14 years. And one of the um, best and most important resources I've gotten to take advantage of to help me fight the good fight has been having an accountability partner. So I want to encourage everyone um, who hasn't taken advantage of that resource to please do that, because it's going to make a huge difference. And I thank um, Gwen for allowing us to even have an accountability partner. It's a wonderful resource. My name is Dana Cohen, and I have lost a total of 105 pounds. Um, I think for me, what helped was to keep it simple. Remember that this is all about a relationship with God. I'm so grateful because this um, has completely saved my life. Way Down has saved my life and saved my relationship with God. Thank you. Hi, my name is Terrell Cohen. I have lost 100 pounds uh, over the last uh, two years. Uh, I'm extremely, truly grateful for a way down. I, if I had one piece of advice, it would be uh, invest as much into your weight loss and your relationship with God as you invested in getting to where you were that you needed help. Hi, my name is Beth Smiley, and I've lost 105 pounds and kept it off over eight years. And um, if you had asked me um, before way down, if um, I was ever going to get my weight off, I think I was the least likely to succeed. Um, I, I wouldn't have believed that I could be this weight. And um, I feel like what did it for me was wanting a relationship with God and knowing that my um, issues with food was preventing my relationship with God. And so uh, just prayer 
and connecting with God and persevering in that and um, just going for that more than anything else has totally changed my life and helped me keep my weight off. Hi, I'm Jamie Field. I was, um, I'm, I'm down 111 pounds and I've had it off for eight years. And uh, the first word that I really felt resounded in my mind, the first tape I heard was hope. And I had so much pain entangled in my heart and I always wanted to do the right thing for God, but this is where I learned how. And so with all the self-focus, I got to flip it and turn it up to God and just learn how to find God in everything. So it's just been so beautiful and I praise God for everything here. <laughs> My name is Garrett Stewart. I'm down 100 pounds over the past two years. And all I can say is if you dive into what is being taught here, your life will be changed forever for the better, infinitely. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lisa Roth. I lost 110 pounds and it's been off for about 15 years. And what helped me at first was um, learning that we do this to crown God king of our lives. And that keeps me going. And now it, it's, you know, what else would matter and what else could possibly work? And there, it does change every single area of your life. It's so worth it. And everybody can do it. My name's Pamela Friesen, and I've lost 130 pounds. And in 1997, I had given up. And then I found way down and um, it was the answer of what I was looking for all my life, and it's never changed, and every class is something I need, and everything on all access is something I need, and um, to keep me going for all to be for God's glory. Thank you. Hi, I'm Colleen Day. I've lost 102 pounds, and it's been off for almost eight years. Um, what I would like to say is that if you're struggling, just there are plenty of resources. Reach out, reach out to the wonderful ladies at the Weight On Office, reach out to your regional reps, reach out to your accountability partner. You don't have to do this alone. They've heard the lies, they've faced the obstacles, and they have overcome them, and they can help you overcome them too. My name is Debbie Blair, and I lost 110 pounds, and it's been off for 16 years. I would say the two resources that helped me the most were the audios in every single class because I needed to hear the truth. And then the second, my, my second favorite um, resource were the workbooks because I needed to understand um, God's word. And so they're just Bible studies. And so I really needed both those resources, and that's what I would say helped me lose the weight. My name is Sherry Lomas, and I've lost 150 pounds, and I've had it off for 20 years. Good evening, my name is Chris Borman. Uh, from here locally, uh, I've lost 75 pounds through this amazing teaching and I've had it off for uh, coming up on 13 years. And uh, I would say, you know, this is not just for women. Uh, we, we need it as much or more than the women. And, and every part of your life will change because you get this amazing connection through these teachings. You know, it starts physically, but internally is what changes so dramatically. So I encourage uh, all those things that bind you, a traditional men with greed and lust and all these things and praise of man, we have answers to everything here. So I highly encourage you to give it a shot. Try it for 30 days wholeheartedly and your life will radically transform. Thank you. Yeah.
just keeps going. Please join Candace and I in welcoming our special guest tonight, Christine Petrolito and Misty Westerby. You can be free, you can Oh my goodness. Okay, so I am excited about tonight, and I know uh, this crowd's going to light it up here, what we've got on stage, and so they have got quite a story to tell, the both of them. And uh, did y'all did y'all hear that? 1,800 pounds, something like that. That's amazing, right? Like, we're on the planet. It's not on the planet. I'm telling you, it's going the opposite direction. I'm sure that we're, um, I mean, I don't know, the World Health Organization has not called us yet, have they? <laughs> so we just need to get to it, don't we? Uh, help, help turn this globe around. So we're going to continue on with this, and we're going to start tonight with Misty Westby telling her story, amazing story. So I lost over 100 pounds. I started, I came for a visit in 2010, and the person that came for that visit is gone. I mean, I'm just, my life is completely changed. It's, sometimes it's just even a loss of words to, to describe it. But I was just full of pain and misery and I was a very anxious, everything was, you know, waiting for the next shoe to drop. And so when a friend invited me to come to a wedding, I was like, yeah, I, I would love to. That, you know, it sounds fun. And she was like, you'll, you'll enjoy it. And I said, well, what am I gonna wear? And she said, don't worry about it. I have." friends that are gonna gather up dresses and you can try them on, which was kind of scary at 245 pounds trying on formals. And it was the, the most peaceful night I'd ever had. I met all these, it was like there was peace and joy everywhere I looked and I didn't know anything about Way Down as, you know, Everybody wanted to show me their before and after pictures and tell me their testimonies. And I was like, I don't know what is going on here, but this is what I want. This is what I've been looking for and didn't even know. And previous, about four months before that, I had just cried out to God and saying, I don't know how to change this life. I don't know how to change the path that I'm on, but I can't live like this anymore. And I don't believe that I would be here. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't even know that I would be on this earth mm -hmm. without this. It, it saved my life. Mm -hmm. oh, no doubt, no doubt. We're glad you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Think about the number of people out there that are desperate for uh, an answer. Spending 33 billion looking for an answer, and here, here it is. You know, and it's it's just amazing. But more and more people are coming back, and they they want to know some specifics, like. Help them with, um, you know, what was, you know, what helped you? What, when you dove in, what'd you start with? Well, I just remember cutting my food in half that first You take away from basics, day. I guess. And at, basics wasn't out yet, so I took the change series. The change series. And so I, you know, started the class, started cutting my food in half and finding hunger and fullness. And really, I wanted to know how, you know, how do I do this? And you would tell us 
in the class how to do it. So then it was just like, I have to do this because if I don't get this right, I can't change. And so it took the constant crying out to God to act, you know, to really do it because I, being at the very bottom in my life, to see that there was a chance to get this, to get the weight off and then all the change on the inside, so the darkness was gone. And then it could be, you know, replaced with light. And the diets for years, it was a roller coaster of gaining and losing and gaining and losing. And I hate roller coasters. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad no more roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I totally agree with that. Just a piece of mm -hmm. where it's the same every day. Yeah. You're the same every day. I mean, all, all of, any kind of worries goes away. Um, so for anybody in any stronghold, that's what everybody's looking for. Is there an end? Is it true that there is an end? And so for you, it was. Okay, so, yeah. okay, thank you very much, Misty. And then Christine, let's tell us, tell us your story. Uh, growing up, I was lean, very athletic, kind of a tomboy, climbing up trees, playing ball. And um, I think, you know, as I got a little older and um, I was a bit rebellious, and um, so I was kind of a little bit of a, a, little bit of a wild streak and midway through. and. Um, got married and I, you weren't allowed to be wild anymore and like be a wife and mother. So yes. um, I think what happened at that point is the only acceptable thing that I could run to uh, was food. And it, it seemed to be accepted, it was accepted, you know, and most of my family was big and um, churches were big. So, you know, I just ate and um, I gained a lot of weight, so uh, you fast forward, then I had, I've got three kids at this point, and um, Candace and Ted, uh, they, that Ted is my brother, and that's my sister-in-law, and um, they had found Way Down, and uh, they would talk about it, in, in my opinion at the time, was kind of ad nauseum, because I was like, all right, enough, you're losing weight, great. <laughs> <laughs> Just well, saying. look what the results it's were. Great. I mean, yeah. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth the yes. hours and hours, hours and like, hours. Look, Christine, I'm off another five <laughs> pounds. Just, and I was like, great. I'm eating a cheese. I'm like, good, good for you. <laughs> Bravo. And so um, then uh, I guess what happened is she kept talking about it, talking about it. I was on the phone with her, and it was a Tuesday. And I know this because uh, she said, hey, have you thought about that way down again? And literally, I, 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 she probably could have felt my eyes roll. I went, no, I, I haven't. And, uh, and she goes, well, you should look into it. Maybe it's at church or something. And I said, sure, sure, yeah, I will. I will, I'll look, I'll look into it. And in the back of my head, though, what I said was, if it falls in my lap. That's what I, that's, it's exactly what I said. And so I hung up, and then the next Day was Wednesday, and I went to you know the midweek church, and I was going to leave after service. And I said um, I, there was a group of women, and they were all kind of fussing about, and I was just trying to get in to say goodnight. And next thing I know, some one of the women said, "Well, I can't believe Sister So and So dropped out because you know I don't know. You have to have at least five people because I don't know if Wade Ann will let us still run the class." And I went. I'm sorry, what did she just say? <laughs> and they, she, she said, uh, we're, we're running a way down class, didn't we tell you? And I said, no. And she said, uh, well, you can join if you want. It starts tomorrow night. And I went, hold on a minute, I'll go get my checkbook. Because I had known at that moment, it just fell in my lap. I mean, yeah, God totally made it fall in my lap. And so I started the next night. And uh, in, in the orientation, I left the orientation feeling very hopeful, you know, and I thought, well, this could work, I guess, you know, I mean, nothing else had, and uh, I started doing the homework, and um, by week two, 
I had lost a few pounds and um, every, I, other people in the class had it and I remember, th- and they would say, well, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know what it says to in the book. Like, <laughs> I'm doing what it says to. I'm, I'm like cutting my food in half and waiting till I'm hungry and, you know. And anyway, by the end of the first month, I knew I had lost weight week to week, you know, but I, I actually had not added it up. Um, and at the end of the first month, somebody said, have you lost weight? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I have. And they said, well, how much? And I was like, oh, I have to add now. Okay. Um, and when I added it all up, it came to 30 pounds. Mm-hmm. And I, I couldn't believe it. I kept saying it out loud, like, wait a minute. No, I, I must be doing the math wrong. And Candace knows I'm really bad at that. So I thought, for sure, I'm doing the math wrong, <laughs> right? And I went back and I, I did it like four times. I went, wow. It's, it's 30 pounds, I've lost 30 pounds. Amazing. <laughs> and so that, so within nine months I had lost 90 pounds. And that, you see at, this, at the same time, I mean I had gotten really big, but I also what I had gotten is very depressed and very, I don't know, just not, unhappy, you know, angry. I was an angry mother, I was not a kind wife. I was just, you know, I just wasn't happy. And um, I would go to the altar every week and beg for somebody to help me be happier, you know, or somebody to help me be kinder or somebody to help me be just have peace in my mind and in my heart. I kept going to church because I knew that it had, God had to be how that happened, you know. But um, it uh, it just wasn't happening. And then... You know, within a couple of months of doing way down, not even, I think it was maybe six weeks, I realized I'm happy. I have joy. I have peace. I, I probably, I probably, what really drove me to my knees was not necessarily my weight. It was the lack of peace. You know, I didn't like being heavy, but I hated, I mean, I could not live with myself every night. It was torturous. And then I, I could finally wake up and be excited for the day. And I could go to bed and not be ho- horribly miserable. You know, I, w- I had such bad insomnia, I'd be up forever in the middle of the night and then tired the whole next day. But um, anyway, so fast forward, then I lose 90 pounds and I'm walking on sunshine and I got, I, I, then I turned out I was expecting again and I panicked. I mean, I panicked. Sure, I thought, I oh, my word, it's just going to all go downhill again. And then I had my, my fourth um, child, and he, um, I, I put on, you know, maybe, I think it was, I know, it was 44 pounds exactly. And that was, it was kind of horrifying, but also at the same time, I kept thinking, okay, God, I know I'm staying within hunger and fullness. I had had the principles down at that point. I knew I was obeying. I knew I was doing it right. So after I had Max... We, um, I thought, okay, this is going to be telling. You know, do I lose the weight now? You know, and within um, within 12 weeks, I had lost all the weight, and so I stopped keeping track of it. You know, I just completely stopped. I thought, okay, and I I was busy. So um, then, what happened is, after a while, my pants started falling down, and I thought, what in the world? What's going on with all my pants? They're all so loose. So I thought, maybe I should weigh myself. So I weighed myself, and I had lost another 12 pounds, and I wasn't even, I wasn't trying to. I thought I was where I was supposed to be then, you know. And, um, but it has started, that, that was, so Max is 15, so that was 15 years ago. And um, That's it's, good math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only because he's 15. <laughs> it was just his birthday. I thought you did it all in your no, head. No, no, I thought no, I was uh, impressed. No, no. Bit. Well, no, yes, that's what I did. <laughs> Um, but uh, it has been the most brilliant, peaceful 15 years of my life. And it has been just an amazing, amazing... I can't even government. imagine you <laughs> depressed. Oh, you know, yeah. That's what's so hard. Yeah. You can't imagine people overweight. You can't yeah. imagine any of these people not happy and joyful. You're one of the <laughs> happiest people I know in the, my yeah. life. And the sunshine and the light oh. for everybody. And yeah. that's because of your classes. I will. God's and your classes. your perseverance. No. Thank you. Awesome, right? <laughs> it's awesome.
so awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you, Candace, for sticking it out, <laughs> even though that was tough. I was new was. in the family, I remember, because I met Ted so quickly, and I was new in the family, and then I was also doing way down, so I just felt like I was a, a neon sign, like, every time I showed the door, but it was so, it was, I mean, I can't imagine now that, I mean, so all of us, you know, that are close here and live here, we all do it together, and yeah. it's just support each other, and it's really fun, so help our kids, you know, so it's amazing. It is. I'm very thankful. No, I'm hearing it, and of course, Candace, you lost... <laughs> Yeah. 50. Yeah. 50, 55, somewhere around there. And um, yeah, it's, I really feel like that the more people I talk to, I just think it's the, there's nobody that has ever taken way down. And if you've taken way down, usually you've done every diet, but there's like no person I talk to that's taken way down and then they go back to a diet and they're like, oh yeah, that diet was really great. Everyone you talk to is like, that was the best, some of the time, like the best memory sometimes over their whole life because they feel yes. so close to God and then they lose all this weight. And I feel like Way Down is like so unique. It is so revolutionary. It definitely does not get the attention it deserves. It does not get the respect it deserves. It's like, it's almost, it's pretty much free. I mean, it's almost free, but people in the world, I mean, they just pay millions of dollars to have what I feel like, you know, these women on stage, but I have what, I mean, to have the peace with God. And, you know, as you get older, you see your peers that are not doing way down, having health problems, physical mm -hmm. problems, you know, and then, you know, maybe problems within the home. And you feel like you were spared because you found way down and put it into practice. Yeah. But it's, and it's amazing that it's, you know, it's so hard to explain because people go like, what do you mean you can eat everything, you, you know, anything, like nothing's off limits. Like, what do you mean, you know, how come? And, and then when they do it, they're like, oh my goodness. And that, I just love that every single day, no matter what my day is like, I can wait for my stomach to growl. I can just wait for my stomach to growl. And I remember you just saying in the videos, and I love the revolution class, just it is day in and day out. Just if you obey God, day in and day out. And then you have all these, I love the tablet, that chapter where it talks about temptation. If you're tempted to eat, but you're not hungry, do these five steps. And I would literally just do the five steps, one, two, three, four, five. And it didn't matter if I was six months doing way down or if I was, had been here 15 years. I, you know, there's still moments of temptation, you know? And so just to be able to put those steps into practice or you get on the scale and you get freaked out about the scale. Well, you just go to revolution class and you do a whole thing on the scale or you go into the tablet and you read the scale. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, right. This is about a relationship with God. I know I'm obeying God. I know I'm doing what he's asking. I know, I, I know the green light is the growl. I'm waiting for the growl. I'm eating small. Okay, my fist. Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you get on and it's like down more. And then it's like down more. But you have, anyway, I feel like, one of the things that you said in the tablet, and it's back in the back chapters, is you talked about if you leave this root of self-indulgence, that it will grow back up again. And um, I really, when I read that, I feel like God had mercy on me and completely opened my eyes because I lost weight and weight down, and I always felt like there was just a little tiny root of self-indulgence that I had left. You know, like maybe not maybe not give up all the food, maybe not wait for the growl every time, maybe not, maybe I deserved it, or, or it's social out, or, oh, well, I'm here at this party, well, I'm this, and, and I had gone too far that way, because I know we're not legalistic, obviously we're spirit-led, and now I feel like I know what that means in food, but so every time I started waiting for the growl, I would picture that root in my mind, and it was like this green root, and it was stuck in the ground, and so every time I went through those temptation steps in the tablet and I killed head hunger. I had this image of pouring like, you know, weed killer on the weed and it would get like, you know, like, you know how the weeds are dying. They, they're real green and strong and the next day they're like bent over and then the next day. So in my mind, I was waiting for that root to get like brown where it just like comes out of the ground like that. So I had this image that every time I did not give in to head hunger, that I was killing that root. And um, which is what you said in the book. So I was doing what you were teaching me. And then um, I had this image in my mind too that if I ate and I wasn't hungry, 
that it was like taking fertilizer yeah. and the next day that root was gonna be like really strong and yeah. like twice as tall because weeds grow so fast, yeah. you know? And I, and I was like, oh my goodness. So I purposed in my mind that I was gonna truly leave the old man behind. Yeah. And I was never gonna pour fertilizer on that again. And it didn't matter if, it, and I was tested really highly because it seemed like I was always hungry when nobody else was hungry. I mean, not a lot of people will eat dinner with you at 11.30 at night, you know? It's like, or, you know, it would just be odd times like 10 a.m. and 11 or, and so I kept like fighting and I was like, God, what, you know, like, like, I'm never hungry when anybody else is hungry. And, and he just kept like showing me more and more like I'm the center of the meal. I'm the center of the social. It's not the wine. It's not the food. And as soon as you like can find me in the middle of, of the dinner and when you can find me, you know, find me during the day, I'm your day. And which is everything you've taught. I mean, you guys know that I'm saying exactly what Gwen is teaching us. And I didn't know I had no idea any of this existed before I found the Way Down Diet book. There was, no one ever taught this. No one has ever taught it. No one will probably ever teach it unless it's, you know, part of your, your family again. But um, I just loved that um, I could wait and, um, and that God could become the center of my day. And then I was no longer looking towards oh, wow, I can't wait till lunch or, and you would say that in the book, but I didn't realize how much head hunger I had when I first started. Like I would think about food like 23 out of the 24 hours a day. I mean, you know, and I was like, and so I would just get on my knees. I would be like, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want you more than food. I want you more than food, God. I want you more than food. I want you more than food. I would like literally say it all the time. And then it was like three weeks of never giving into head hunger. And after like three weeks, almost going into the fourth week, head hunger was literally, that root was dead. And so much weight came off. But at the same time, I felt like I had to keep walking. And I, and I could feel the spirit. I felt the spirit in the sweets. I felt the spirit in the alcohol. I felt, the, I felt like the, the feeling of like too much salt, like too much salt, like too much, you know, like, too much, and, and, and I made some mistakes in there, you know, like I, you know, but I, for those weeks, I never one time gave in to head hunger, and I felt like that root got killed, and, um, and I feel, it's like so close to God, and I, and it, then it, as you know, it trickles down, as Gwen says, it trickles down to everything, so then you're looking, so when something else comes up or you're trying to overcome something else in your mind, you're like, oh yeah, I remember. The, well, it was like four weeks of like total all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, which is what you always said. And I didn't know what that meant. So I know I'm just gonna take everything, you know, for those, for these four weeks and then I'll start to feel freedom, you know, but I've got to fight, you know, it's just like that spiritual war of fighting that moment of head hunger when you're sitting going, Am I going to go up and get that and eat it? Or am I going to say no? Am I going to go up there and eat it? And, I was, and I'm like, just set the timer like she said. Play the room, set the timer, you know. Get the heck out of there and go clean out your sock drawer again. So my sock drawer is like really organized. So. No, but anyway, all that to say is that there's just, I feel like this is the most, the, I feel like the more people I talk to, as the older I get, um, in fact, I just talked to someone this week and it's someone that has nothing to do with the church, did way down years ago. And when they think back on it, they think of it as one of the most fun times in their life, mm -hmm. one of their most peaceful time in their life. And I agree. And I feel like it's so, um, it's just not showing the respect it should be shown because it is amazing. It's fun and it's healthy and it's, and it's exciting. Every day is so exciting. Every day is such an adventure with God when you're finding hunger and That's fullness. So fun. And so anyway, like no. a huge thank you. No, oh, huge. Huge. Thank, you huge thank, thank you God, thank you God. Thank you. And thus my co-host, <laughs> Candice Ange. <laughs> Philippians 3, their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. 
Their mind is on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here, you know, I think about the whole, the whole thing boils down to that God is, that it's whatever your God is. And you can make anything a God, and we have made everything a God, and so we've been miserable until you make the God your God, and so it is about love. It's about, the whole thing boils down to love. But um, do y'all remember a time where th there was a determination, uh, that you're determined, kind of that all-in video, but just you're determined. You're, can you remember fighting, like she was talking about, just this, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, even during the past year, because there's, it's like my life is full of blessings at this time. And so if I'm not careful, I find myself to get complacent in those blessings. Like, you know, to, to just be in a wonderful life and you're, you're just going along and then God gives you something else to cry out for. And so that he, he keeps me to know that if I'm, if I'm wanting that food when I'm not hungry, then, you know, as you've taught us to take that time and go to God. And if there's turmoil coming in, in some way, you know, in life that it is, or a sickness or, you know, something that it's keeping me to turning to Him. So when those things come up, I, I see it as a clear sign that I'm in a moment of being complacent and I'm, I'm not being as thankful to him for this life. And so I am constantly to, to cry out, to reach out to my accountability partner, to stay in classes and to be so thankful for where we are. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Christine? I remember, just to piggyback also off what Candace was saying, the thing about the head hunger, I, I don't feel like that, that is given enough thought. I remember when I, when I first took the class, one of the first things you kept saying was, um, well, you're, you're overweight because you're in love with the food. And I kept thinking, all right, well, I'm not really in love with the food, but, but you know, she said, you said, you think about it all the time. And I thought, I never think about it. You know, this is, this is the veil. It's like a veil. You don't realize how much you're thinking about it. And um, after a couple of weeks and you, you, I'm doing the work and everything, I realized, oh my word, I am sick. There is something very wrong with me. I think about it all the time. And I've, I had the same epiphany as Candace. So it makes you, it made me realize how, how, much of a war it is. So um, when I had lost all this weight and I did really well because I kept thinking about, you know, you just, you just cannot give in to, to head hunger and you can't eat past fall. So I would get, you know, I'd, I'd really trained my, myself to be busy. It was easy with four kids, you know, to be busy. So um, that part was easy. Sometimes it was a little harder to stop at full, I think. And so um, at the time I had two dogs, they, they definitely benefited from this because the minute I got a little bit of food, I would just put it on the floor, you know. They Way would have a Yeah, they would hurry up and eat it. Or if they weren't necessarily around, I, I can remember doing things like literally putting water on my food just to make it kind of gross. Good it was one. just, a, yeah. just a, something to do. And, um, <laughs> and so it was really good. And then one time, it was right around this time of year, you know, uh, the, I had probably lost, um, I don't know, 75 pounds at this point. And I felt really good. You know, you feel great. You're sleeping. And I was going to make, um, I was making Thanksgiving dinner. It was just me and my husband and my kids. And so um, I made everything. And then I decided to make pumpkin pie by, from scratch. So you get the pumpkin, not, you know, and, but I had put all this work into it and then I, and it looked delicious. And then, so anyway, so we make all the meal and I eat off my nice little plate and everything's great. And then I'm serving dessert and I thought, oh, I'll just have, you know, one bite, which would have been fine. But um, I 
ate the whole slice of pie, which, you know, I just had not done that. And I, I, I thought, oh, and that, it bothered me all night. And I realized later on, Physically or spiritually? Both. Mm. Both. More spiritually, because like I said, I mean, the, the whole reason I loved this way of life, this message, this, this what, we've, what you've taught us is because I had peace. For the first time ever in my life that I can remember, I had absolute peace and I didn't have it that night. I didn't, I, you know, I just didn't have it and I was, that frightened me. I, I, I wanted, I needed my peace back and I remember just saying, God, please forgive me, please, and just help me not go there. But it, it boiled down to the, the, the head hunger, which it wasn't, but it was that longing, you know, like I had made it, I, I don't know, I, I thought, I didn't stop my mind. So that was really one of those things that I really stopped my mind at that point and made sure that I took every thought captive. The scripture tells us, this is the way down classes tell us, and I said, I'm not gonna let my mind just go where it wants to anymore. I'm just going to, you know, if I'm thinking about how good that pie might be, you said in several of the classes, you know, you don't, you wait till you're hungry. And then if that's what you're calling for, then just go ahead and have it. But thinking about it beforehand is just a lot, it's a, it's a lust, it's, it's not out of place. And so for, that was very eye-opening to me. And um, I, it gave me, I continued then to lose 15 pounds th- through the rest of that, um, that holiday season. So that by the time January came, I was at um, 90 pounds. Is that right, 75 plus 15? I yeah. can't do the math. Okay, thank God. <laughs> so. Well, the, the point is, on all of it, is, bottom line, that it does boil down to what you love. And if you're struggling, if you're new or if you're struggling, you've been at it for a long time, you're still not getting, getting the point that this is about, you, you can't lo- love two masters. You're going to love the one and hate the other, be devoted to one and despise the other. You just can't. God made us our heart that way. We can only love one thing, and you've got to love God above yourself. And if you don't, then uh, it's going to be telling. It's very telling, because you will be constantly in this struggling situation where this war's going on and inside of your heart. And you can't figure out, why can't I just lose that weight? Why can't I just let it go? And it would be because you're doing everything you can to hang on to the love of the food, the love of eating, the love of drinking, lusting, whatever it is that uh, gives you a buzz, whatever it is. But the the fact is, and it could go into all um, all kind of situations where it's pride, that you love pride or you love talking too much. There's, it's God's divided up these vices all over the place, so we don't have the same vices. And, but the, the answer to all the vices is the same. Way Down Basics is, the, is just the answer to all the vices. It's just mere Christianity. And there is a way that if you will Go in there and start over. Even if you've done it before and you've done it several times, start over. The holiday season's coming up. It's not time to say, I'm going to give into my love, the wrong love, and go ahead and just wait till January. We're not going to do that. We usually do a a, a time of, of, of just a time from now all the way to, to Christmas to determine that we're going to put God above everything, above all things and what He wants. And what He wants, His boundaries are beautiful. It's not that hard, but you've got to, to, it's not hard at all if you end the love. So you fall in love with what you focus on, focus on the right thing. If If your stomach is your God, then you're, you're going to always struggle. But if God is your God and pleasing Him and seeing His smile and getting it right before Him, 
then if that's, if that's your God, then bottom line, you will overcome. And so we saw a lot of weight loss tonight, didn't we? A lot of weight loss. That's a lot of people that have lost a lot of weight. And a away. And the answers are there. At least God has given us the answers. You need to be thankful for that. Get a hold of it now. Put it into practice by concentrating on the love, ending the love for the world and loving the only thing that can love you back. Nothing else can love you back. Nothing. I don't care what you think might give you something. It can't. You can't depend on anyone, any human. You can't depend on anything, nothing. There's only one, one being that, that, that is the source of love and that can love you back. So invest in God through His Son, Jesus Christ, who was totally in love with His Father, totally in love, and He showed us exactly how to do it. You do that, change your love, focus up, set your mind on loving God, you will gain everything, but you will lose your weight. So hang in there, everybody. See you next time. Praise God. Sing for eternity with our God and His Son Jesus.